We've got a special two-part episode of Muscle Car of the Week. I know Cobras are not really muscle cars, but everybody still likes them. Today we're talking with David Phelan, who raced a 289 competition Cobra in SCCA racing back in 1967. These first-hand experiences with this car are really fantastic, and there's a neat story about what happened to his car. you've raced a car like a Cobra, which is probably for, for most people and for at least up into the most recent times when cars have got launch control and everything, they're the, they're the fastest front engine cars that were ever built. And when you take a car that'll go from 0 to 60 in 4.2 seconds and 0 to 110 seconds, and you put it on a race course with 20 cars around you, burning rubber all the way down into turn one, you never get over it. It's something that's there forever. And to compare it to anything else is pretty difficult to do. So that's what I think about when I think about Cobra racing. I'm sitting behind the original body that was on my, that was on my Cobra. And I have, uh, I, dr I drove this car for one season and uh, at the FCCA national level. I probably drove it, um, I think I drove it in 15, 16 races uh, during the season. Uh, it, it has now been restored, of course, uh, by, by someone in Chicago. It was completely restored. Um, and apparently when they restored it, they, had, they took the body off of it. And this is the original body that was in, was on my, the car that I owned. And, uh, I think everybody from Charlie Parsons to myself and probably a few other people afterwards have put a few more dents in it, but I certainly put, I put my share of dents in it too, mainly down at Riverside um, where I hit the wall and turned six at a pretty good clip and took the left front off of it and uh, did some major damage to it. Now they've, you know, everything is a rolling start. Well then everything was a standing start. That changes the game. That's a game changer. Because when you're sitting on the front of the grid and you look back and you got 36 cars behind you, you better get off the line right because there's going to be guys that are going to be all over you in a hurry. And in, uh, in 4.2 seconds, you're going to be going 60. And in 10 seconds, you're going 100. And if you make a mistake with 36 cars behind you, you got a lot of problems. They're going to go all over you. And there's nothing, uh, I was down at Vacaville one time when I, uh, for a national race down there, and I think I was sitting second on a grid or something like that, or third on a grid, um, and um, I was back from a couple guys, and I, all I can remember is, for some reason, when everybody fired up, there was a Sunbeam Tiger in front of me, and I forget the name of the gentleman who could really drive the car. He was driving for, for Shelby for the Tiger then. Um, very good race car driver. But you could see, I mean, all of a sudden, these, in a standing start, anything can happen. So the cars compress together. The hoods start coming off these things. I mean, start, things start flying. Dust is everywhere. You can't see anything. You're going completely by the seat of your pants. All you're doing is shifting the car, you're watching the, t I mean, you're hardly watching the tack. You've got too much stuff to do. I mean, it's all here. And uh, you're hoping that those tires aren't spinning, that, you, that you're, well, A, that you got it going, you didn't kill it on the start, uh, because you got a cam that's, you know, that's got to run above 1200 RPM. So you got to make sure you, you got it just right. And then you don't want the car sideways. I mean, the car will go sideways on you, give it too much juice. And then, so you got to keep it going straight. And then you got to have trust in the guy that's going to give you room when you go around him that he's going to give you enough room that he's looking in here, his mirrors and you're looking in yours because you may have a 427 Cobra behind you that got a little bit better bite and where is he going to be? So you just can't shoot off to the right or shoot off to the left. So um, all of these things are going on through your mind is you got to do it. You got to do everything right. You got to feel responsible enough to get the car off the line, to get it going straight and realize that when you get down towards turn one, you're going to be clipping right along at 140, 150 miles an hour. Now you've got to get it all shut down. 
and you can't spin that car in turn one. I've done it before and got away with it, but uh, you know, you miss your mark just a little bit, your brake mark just a hair, or you got a little oil on the track, or somebody put a little water down, um, and you got the car sideways. Now you got 36 cars coming at you in turn one, and they're all set up. I mean, they're coming through there. If you're in the way, it's going to be a major accident. So all of those things are going through your mind as you, you know, you head into turn one at the start of the race. It's, it's a pretty phenomenal experience. It's an experience that, that, that really very few people get to have. And all of the horsepower, the noise is, is outrageous. I mean, you, it just shuts out everything. You're just, all you can hear is this huge, when they ran A production, this car ran A production at that time. Later on, it ran B production with this four barrel on it. But at that point in time, it ran with just the Webers. And so it ran A production with the 427s and the Corvettes and all the big, the big iron. And that big iron was all making all kinds of noise next to you. And when you headed down into turn one, all you saw was guys, you're moving around, they're moving around, everybody's under braking. And those cars are not, I mean, this car, they're not like the cars now where they're really very stable and everything, uh, traction control and all the other things that a lot of cars have on them. These cars were, they're moving around all the time. So you got cars moving around you, you got to drive around them. If a guy spins in front of you, you got to be able to get around him and uh, make sure you got enough room to do it and be thinking way ahead. If it does happen, what are you going to do? And then uh, when you're coming down into like into Vacaville into turn one where you're going to get down into first gear again, there you are, you're moving. When you plant your foot on it, you're in first gear all over again. You're going through that same blast of acceleration down in the next turn. You're clipping, you know, you're just popping those gears. Uh, that car is, you're, you're running that car as hard as you can run it. You don't even care. I mean, at first you think, just take it easy on the car, Dave. Just, you know, make it last. But when you get behind it, you get the juice going in you, and the adrenaline is just, it's amazing what you, how high the adrenaline is. You don't think about anything except seeing 7,000 on that tack. And you don't shift it until it hits 7,000. And everything is, it's, you're pushing that car as hard as it'll go. So, um, you know, you're, and, and all you're doing is really thinking about winning is all you're doing. You're thinking about the guy, next guy in front of you, trying to pick him off and then the next guy in front of him. Or if you started in the front, obviously, you're trying to, you know, stay in front the whole time. So sometimes you're, in, sometimes you're on the pole, sometimes you're not. So it's kind of a different way of, you know, attacking a 30-minute race. And on the other hand, it's amazing. You get about 15 minutes through the race and you realize your adrenaline level has brought you to the point where you're, you're, you're kind of realize that you're, you're beginning to tire just a little bit. So now you've got it. Now you have to gather yourself up a little bit. Don't make a mistake because you're tired. Slow the car down just a little bit. You don't take a lot off it. You don't have to run it 10 tenths or 9 tenths. You run it 7 to 8 tenths just to build back up your strength because you know in the last five minutes somebody's going to be coming after you because they're going to want to win as bad as you do. And then you have to turn it all on again and, and get up to that 9 tenths and that 10 tenths. You have, to ch you have to change your whole attitude again and run the car hard again. And, that, and, and, and it is, it is kind of difficult just to make that change sometimes, to, to get, bring back that little bit of extra energy again at the, at the end of the race. So all of those things kind of come together during the race to give you an experience. And the most amazing thing is when you step out of the car, it's like you realize how much energy you've expended driving a race car. And you really get an appreciation for just the, and then it wasn't so much you didn't understand it, the training, you know, the athletic ability of these people driving these cars. But it is pretty phenomenal, just the athletic ability that goes into being able to see, you know, the hand-eye coordination thing is phenomenal in these guys. These guys that are driving these race cars then, these guys that were very, very good, they're, they're all tremendous athletes. So it's a, it's a really total experience that, uh, that I found uh, exhilarating. I, 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 obviously, I still have the same feeling for it. It's almost like it ha happened yesterday to me. Make sure you check out part two of this video series because David will take us through the ins and outs of a 289 competition car and show us the original body.